citizens of Los Angeles have treasure beneath their feet. Back in the 1890s, the small town of Los Angeles, which had a population of about 50,000, began a complete transformation that was driven by the discovery and drilling of some of the most productive oil fields in history. That's right, the City of Angels sits on top of a gigantic oil field that was discovered by Edward Doheny. Angelinos will recognize Doheny's last name. So that's where that comes from. At its peak in 1901, there were approximately 200 separate oil companies actively working on the fields. Today, this oil field is entirely built over by LA's dense residential and commercial neighborhoods. What's wild is that the dense city development notwithstanding, there are still dozens of active oil drills spread across town. Many of them are hidden in plain sight as the environmentally conscious Angelinos would have an aversion to seeing an oil drill pumping out black gold in their neighborhood. In 1967, a hideous beige building with no windows was put up on Pico in the Mid Wilshire neighborhood. Why would anyone want to work in a windowless building when you live in a town with weather like LA's? It's because this monstrosity isn't actually an office building. It's just a shell that conceals 52 oil and gas wells owned by Sentinel Peak Oil. The Pico Robertson neighborhood also sits on top of the oil fields. This neighborhood has had a robust Jewish population since the 1940s. So in 1966, when oil company Occidental Petroleum wanted to disguise their oil drill inside the neighborhood, they decided to make it look like a synagogue. Today, this site is home to Pacific Coast Energy, and it houses 40 wells. Until 2017, one of these drills stood 165 feet tall. <laughs> this behemoth was on Olympic right behind Beverly Hills High School. It was known as the Tower of Hope. It was clad in vinyl, sound-absorbing material, and decorated with flowers that were painted by hospitalized children. This thing was an iconic eyesore until its owner, Venico Oil, went bankrupt. So for you locals that were wondering what happened to it, there you go. Now it's a tiny eyesore. Progress? There's an abandoned zoo right in the heart of LA. Back in November of 1966, thousands of animals were relocated from the Griffith Park Zoo to the new Los Angeles Zoo, which is still operating today. The Griffith Park Zoo was closed, but here's what's weird. They didn't tear it down or anything. The empty zoo is still just chilling in the middle of the park. There are animal cages as well as large animal exhibits. Fun fact, this is where the bear scene from Anchorman was filmed. Apparently, there are packs of wild coyotes that go scavenging for food in the zoo. So make sure if you have one of those classic LA tiny dogs that you don't let it roam too far. Because your pocket pooch might make a nice bougie snack for some coyotes. Pop quiz! Hot shot! The Hollywood sign used to read something slightly different. Do you know what it used to say? And why was it put there in the first place? See if you can guess the correct answers in the comment section below, and stay tuned till later on in the video to see if you're right. With this next one, I'm gonna use a bunch of euphemisms because I don't wanna be flagged by YouTube. So you remember how in the late 1930s there was that pretty big conflict over in Europe? That one failed artist Austrian with the super lame mustache, he got all the Germans riled up that the Treaty of Versailles was unfair towards Germany. So they started to invade all the countries. <laughs> well, at the time of the Blitzkrieg across Europe, over here in Los Angeles, there was a wealthy couple that were sympathizers towards the iniquitous plans of Mr. Lame Mustache. Oh snap! I just said the word of the day, iniquitous. Iniquitous means flagrantly wicked or morally wrong. Good synonyms would be immoral or evil. See if you can use iniquitous in a sentence in the comment section below, and we'll feature the person with the most creative phrase in our next video. So this wealthy couple was Norman and Winona Stevens, and they were totally down with the German takeover. German sympathizers in California. <laughs> I did not see that one coming. <laughs> Norman and Winona got the wild idea to build a massive headquarters slash home base for German sympathizer activities in the US. The compound was named Murphy's Ranch and it was capable of being self-sustaining for long periods of time. 
It included a fuel tank, underground shelter, bunker, and a water tank. The idea was that it would be refuge for when the American government fell apart. Then the day after the Japanese made that super silly move of going after Pearl Harbor, the local police stormed the compound and detained 50 people who were residing there. The former stronghold is still up in the hills above Brentwood, but it's not looking very wunderbar. Los Angeles is home to one of the most cursed addresses in America. This place has been the site of shocking slayings, as well as a place where multiple people have taken their own lives. Known as the Cecil Hotel, it was constructed and opened in 1925. You history buffs out there might be thinking to yourself, yikes, that's unfortunate timing. And that's because four years later, the country fell into the Great Depression. The area around the hotel was hit hard. It descended into the neighborhood that we all know today as Skid Row. The hotel dissolved into a sordid stronghold of unseemly debauchery. All manner of villainy has taken place inside its walls. Flash forward to today, and there have been dozens of reports of ghost sightings in the hotel. The building was actually the inspiration for the setting of the fifth season of American Horror Story. The weirdest recent event to take place in the hotel was in February of 2013. A 21-year-old Canadian student named Elisa Lamb checked in, but she never checked out. Elisa was last seen alive in a grainy elevator video that was recorded in the middle of the night on January 31st. She looks seriously possessed in this video. She does all these spastic stepping movements in and out of the elevator and then just disappears off camera. The next day, the hotel guests were complaining about low water pressure and that the water from the tap tasted funny. When the maintenance man went up to check the water tank on the top of the roof, he found Elisa inside of it floating lifeless. It's unclear how the woman made it past the alarm system and all the way to the roof. Elisa's story has only served to bolster the hotel's creepy reputation. Here's one that's going to infuriate anyone who has to battle the 405 on their way to work. In the 1920s, Los Angeles was home to the largest trolley system in the world. Yeah, our fair city, the one that's plagued with the worst traffic in the country, used to have a public transportation system that was second to none. At its peak, the system included 1,100 miles of track, and it was traversed by millions of commuters in electric trolleys. There's a myth that General Motors and other auto parts manufacturers bought the electric trolley system through a shell company called National City Lines, and that they eventually had the lines dismantled to increase the demand for automobiles. It turns out this tale is apocryphal. After the Second World War, Angelinos had a shift in demand toward single-family homes that were further away from the city's urban core. This created more sprawl in Los Angeles. Suddenly, owning a car made a lot more sense to get around town, and ridership declined precipitously to the point that the trolley system tragically went bankrupt. This is a huge bummer, as nowadays LA is struggling to rebuild a public transportation system that could only hope to somewhat match the shadow of its former glory. Who knows, maybe it will be ready for the Olympics. I give it 50-50. <laughs> this next one is super obscure, and I doubt that anyone living in town is aware that in LA, it's illegal to lick a toad. I didn't say that wrong, and you heard me right. There is a type of toad in LA called the Sonoran Desert Toad. It secretes a venom that, if licked, will induce hallucinogenic effects. So yeah, people figured that out and went to town. Apparently, the toad licking heyday was in the 60s. It was a totally wild and free time. The city declared toad licking illegal and the law is still on the books. We got an anti state in this town. You don't tell me what I can't lick. I tell you what I can't lick. It's answer time. <laughs> the Hollywood sign was erected in 1923 and it originally read Hollywoodland. Its purpose was to advertise the name of a new housing development in the hills above Hollywood. In 1949, the sign was falling apart. Funny story, the sign's caretaker, Albert Koch, was driving in the hills while intoxicated and ran right into the letter H. Totally destroyed it. 
And then later in that year, the city decided to repair the sign, but with the stipulation that land be removed so that the sign would represent the neighborhood and not just a housing development. This one is less of a secret and just more of a fun fact that I thought you'd like. The Hollywood Forever Cemetery is the final resting place for many of the entertainment industry's biggest stars. And this includes the former Looney Tunes voice actor, Mel Blanc. And his gravestone reads, that's all folks. Largely unknown to both tourists and locals, LA has a massive network of secret underground tunnels. In total, there are more than 250 recorded tunnels beneath the city. And if put together, they make 11 miles of passages. These tunnels were burrowed for a myriad of reasons. One was built to transport high profile criminals from their jail cells to the city's hall of justice. Others were part of LA's original subway system. Now they're just a labyrinth of abandoned graffiti covered concrete. During prohibition, these tunnels were the most poppin' spot in town, old sport. Not only were they used to secretly transport liquor to thirsty city dwellers in the estimated 400 speakeasies that were hidden in the city between 1920 and 1933, but patrons of these bars were able to use the tunnels to move around secretly from one establishment to another. And the underground party never stopped. Nowadays, the tunnels are largely closed off to the public. However, there are a few companies that offer tours of LA's underbelly. Thanks for watching, YouTube. What do you think about LA? Is it the best? Is it the worst? Let us know in the comments below. If you haven't already, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Throw us a like, maybe a share, all the good things. Bye now.